The world of interface opens at the beginning of time itself, putting forth this simple question. Why does life exist? And why does life continue to grow and advance? This ideology will become important later on in the timeline. Enter Henrik Nabisky, born 1910, a photographer for the military who mysteriously arrived injured at a hospital by parachute without a nearby plane in sight in the days when the skies were still blue and the unseen was still hidden from mortal eyes. Henrik married the nurse whom had found and saved him and soon they brought forth a daughter. Henrik had a family. His life was happy and complete. Then came the event that changed the world. War times had returned and Henrik once again took up the mantle of military photographer. During this war, a cloaking experiment was performed, but the technology malfunctioned and the ship and crew were teleported. Upon uncloaking, the crew began to break down into energy and fuse to the hull of the ship. One of the passengers, likely a clown named Percy, completely destabilized and began to rise from the chaos of the destabilized matter below. Upon seeing this, the military began shooting at the unidentified object triggering a discharge of the being's unstable energy that it had absorbed from the ship's cloaking device. The result was the reveal of the world of the unseen. Creatures and spirits, which had once been invisible, could now be seen by all. And thus, we are introduced to our three main characters, as a young Mr. Greetings watches mischief, before he was mischief, fall into the sea and rise as the Great Serpent. Hendrick was photographing a nearby power plant around this time, and the blast, whether it was from this event or supercharged by it, killed Hendrick instantly. The energy combined with his will to survive, allowing him to reform, but locked him into an infinite time loop. Hendrick was now essentially immortal. Mr. Greetings, the lone survivor of the ship vowed to return the world to the way it was, even if that meant hunting down his changed crewmates. He was tasked with this mission and given full support by the government. Meanwhile, the escaped mischief had tried to return to his life at the circus due to his loyalty and admiration as symbolized by the sunflower. But not only loyalty and admiration to the circus, but I believe for this clownstress as well. As the years passed, Henrik's wife grew old and eventually passed on, but Henrik, trapped in the time loop, did not. Mr. Greetings used his power, achieved by his government trust and backing, and started a company referred to as Greetings Robotics. At Henrik's wife's funeral, many did not understand why Henrik had not aged. His acceptance among the world of man was fading. Perhaps he no longer belonged among them. Henrik and his daughter returned home, and in their mourning, they pondered the mysteries of Henrik's situation. Some time passed, and Henrik and his now adult daughter look back on their memories of his wife with fondness. Henrik still has family. He is not alone, and though he is still burned by his loss, he is recovering. Greetings Robotics, the company Mr. Greetings founded with the government backing revolutionizes the world with the discovery of a limitless clean energy in the form of human spirit or cerebral energy. Henrik's daughter soon marries and she has a daughter of her own. Meanwhile in Dreamland, the Ringmaster grows jealous of the relationship blooming between Mischief and the Clownstress and he separates them and makes her his own. And I believe he has a child with her. Henrik's granddaughter marries and has a daughter of her own, making Henrik a great-grandfather. Now, having been alone for some time, depression from isolation and his parting from his wife sets in. Mischief is distraught and realizes that without her, he no longer belongs within the world of man. He sets Dreamland ablaze and searches for a new home among the spirits in the wild. Henrik's daughter decides to confront her ageless father about his immortality as she feels her own life coming to a close, but even he doesn't understand it. Death came to claim Henrik's daughter. 
Henrik once again was left behind, unable to join his loved ones in the afterlife. He grew quiet and distant. As Henrik's daughter's soul left her body, it formed into a spirit being in the shape of a hand. A being we refer to as the ghost. The ghost met up with her daughter and explained to her that her time was soon to come as well. Her daughter then made a deal with her. She would join her in the afterlife, but first, she wanted her to promise to keep her granddaughter alive and safe, allowing her to go on in their stead. The day of reckoning approached quickly, and we see the spirits gather to witness the event, mischief included. Henrik, having fallen into depression, has decided to end his own life. The spirits watch in waiting. The ghost, posed to save her grandchild, and mischief, posed to feed on those who are soon to depart. The moment arrives. Henrik walks in front of an oncoming vehicle and embraces death with open arms. Death does not find him, however, and instead claims the lives of the passenger and the driver, who just so happened to be Henrik's granddaughter and her husband. The spirits quickly act, the ghost saving her granddaughter and mischief feeding on the ghost of the fallen parents. Henrik looks down in horror, having recognized what he had just done. He dives in, hoping to save them, but only finds the lifeless bodies of his granddaughter and her husband and the sunken vehicle. He is now more alone than ever. The ghost can be seen caring for her granddaughter in a secure location. Greetings Robotics unveils its newest creation, the missing piece in the quest to restore the world to the way it was before. Kami, a robotic interface capable of both using cerebral energy to fly, teleport, and other incredible feats, and to store spiritual beings indefinitely, thus removing them from our world in a humane way. The interface included an artificial world in which these beings could peacefully live, unseen once again by human eyes. And so the hunt began, starting with the ghost. Kami used its powers to deconstruct the wall of the apartment building in which the ghost and her granddaughter were lodged and ripped the spirit away from the child, leaving the poor orphan abandoned. We now return to Henrik, staring into the cerebral energy eyes of a mannequin, desperate to know the secrets of it and why he cannot join his family. Mischief, having felt the ghost's presence disappear, is frightened, and during his run, he spots a familiar face. He pokes Henrik and quickly explains how he came to be. Henrik is stunned, but intrigued by this undead being such as himself. Mischief asks for Henrik to join him on his run and becomes a bus for faster, safer travels. Mischief feels as if Henrik's will is telling him to stop at a nearby art gallery, so he disguises himself as clothing basically fusing with Henrik's spiritual energy, and the two enter the gallery. Inside, they find a painting that resembles Henrik, the son of man by a René Magritte. Mischief dislodges from him to discuss this painting. Suddenly, another gallery guest approaches. Mischief disguises himself as a flower, proving that his love and dedication still propels him, though now the dedication is to Henrik, and helping him reunite with his great-granddaughter. Mischief then finds a painting that reminds him of his own birth into this form, and the birth of this new world of invisible spirits. The painting, Geopolitical Child, by Salvador Dow. He explains the significance to Henrik. Henrik is reminded of the day the world changed, and his time-locked curse began, and he is sent spiraling into mental anguish. Henrik falls unconscious to the floor. Meanwhile, Cami is assimilating the ghost into the main interface brain, in a blimp high above the city. Mr. Greetings is in this blimp as well, and it's obvious that he is mentally distressed. His objective from long ago is being completed at long last, but he wonders if this is truly what is right. If the cerebral energy revealed itself to humanity the way it did on purpose, then perhaps it had a reason to. These beings seem to represent body parts of something bigger. He began to ponder the meaning and came to the conclusion that this was an evolutionary event and he needed only assemble the pieces to this great being. This could still be accomplished through his current mission, 
by assembling the parts within the interface. And so he continued to carry out the plan with this new hidden agenda in mind. Henrik wakes up in a hospital bed to a commercial for Greetings Robotics. Mischief flies in and informs him that he is healthy, but the staff is concerned about his age and impossible youthful appearance. To keep him from becoming a lab experiment, he flies Henrik out the window by becoming a parachute. Mischief meets up with an old friend at his restaurant. He suspects that Henrik should be hungry by now and could use a good meal. Mischief is one with Henrik again, but the octopus spirit recognizes him almost immediately, stating that Mischief's pink camo is useless. Mischief then retorts that it depends on what the camouflage is hiding you from. They have a brief discussion about the strong eating the weak, but the lowly parasite eating the strong. The octopus claims that Mischief is doing this now, and he admits to it, separating from Henrik. The octopus then proceeds to tell Mischief about his prophetic dreams concerning Cami and the interface, as a strange man enters the not-yet-opened restaurant. Mischief becomes a fly and tells the man to come back later. Mischief treats Henrik to dinner, but he won't touch a thing. Henrik begins to open up about his lost family, and Mischief informs him that they are not all gone, and that his great-granddaughter lives. Feeling guilt, Mischief then opens up about his need to consume souls, and hints at having absorbed Henrik's granddaughter and her husband. Henrik agrees to go and seek his great-granddaughter. We then see Mischief become a car, and the two drive off, as we see the mysterious guy from earlier reporting the spirits to Greetings Robotics. Inside the Greetings Robotics blimp, we see Mr. Greetings in conflict with himself over completing the mission as requested and give life to this being he's building within the interface. He wonders if his choices are his own, or if something is working through him. Cammy, being a machine powered by spirits, begins to long for identity, an identity that a collective cannot possess, individuality. We then witness Cammy attempting to assimilate the octopus spirit, having identified it as a spiritual heart of sorts. The two are locked in combat, Cammy eventually overpowering the octopus spirit by utilizing the powers it obtained from the ghost. Henrik's will begins to guide Mischief to his long-abandoned home. While the two are traveling, Mischief notices that Henrik's cigarette keeps reappearing after he uses it. It is now that Mischief realizes the scope of the time block that Henrik has found himself within. And due to his lack of devouring spirits, Mischief is incapable of holding his car form and morphs into something more sustainable. On the way, Mischief spots a frog about to be killed and stops to feast on the cerebral energy. A surprise encounter ensues, when the spirit of the stream awakens and tells Henrik that death is not something to anguish over, but a natural part of life, as everything rots and dies, so that life may move on. Henrik ponders this, as Mischief snags a quick photo of the spirit and snacks on the frog's energy. The two arrive at Henrik's old home, and he notices that the tree that had been in his family for generations has too been uprooted and is dying. Back in the blimp, Cammy is processing the newly acquired Heart Octopus Spirit and has set its sights on Henrik and Mischief next, using the memories gained by the assimilation. It's at this point that we observe the handiwork of the city powered by Greetings Robotics. Buildings are built by the spiritual hands of Cammy, using cerebral energy conversion to build the buildings themselves. We also see Henrik's great-granddaughter wandering the streets alone but one of the hands shifts back into the ghost before her eyes. Henrik mourns his losses once again, over the melancholy tunes of his harmonica, before falling asleep on the couch. In the morning, the lighthouse catches Henrik's attention, and the two set out to pay it a visit. Upon arriving, Mischief begins to feel uneasy, and questions what is drawing them near. Henrik's great-granddaughter is shown flying toward a location with seagulls present, is she too heading to the lighthouse? Back in the city, we hear Mr. Greetings discussing on TV whether the world was meant to be this way or not, and if it is truly right to try to reverse this new world that the children of this generation grew up with, they know not of the old world. Is it truly fair to them? Henrik and Mischief prepare to enter the lighthouse, and as they draw near, they both notice a strange energy coming from within, against their better interests. They enter the lighthouse and ascend to the top. Once at the top, 
Henrik thought for sure that he saw his wife's face in the pulsating tube of cerebral energy. He doesn't get to focus on this curiosity for long, however. For in the distance, a noise echoes across the skies. The Greetings Robotics blimp has located them. And Mr. Greetings, having recognized the being responsible for the world changing, activates the artificial intelligence brain of the interface and orders it to use the sea life spirits to quickly complete itself and then hunt down mischief. The eyes open and the interface begins absorbing. The shift in energy causes the tube of souls to destabilize and the spirits within overtake Henrik, pulling him into the elementary interface. In the next scene, we see Henrik with his eyes filled with cerebral energy. The rudimentary interface was able to access his mind, but not absorb his body. While this is happening, we now see Mr. Greetings directly linked into the interface hub. The AI decides that he has outlived his usefulness in his physical form and kills his body so that it can consume his soul to complete itself. We are then thrown into the artificial world within the interface where Greetings and Henrik meet. Greetings shows Henrik what he believes to be the truth of the world and asks Henrik to fully join with the interface by pressing the red button in the lighthouse so that the deity he knows should rightfully exist can be born. He tells him that he can live happily within the interface and that his wife is in there and can be with him once again. He then reveals this to be true and the two have a long awaited reunion. Henrik is left with the choice between being reunited with his family here or to return to his quest of finding his great granddaughter in the world of the living. Back in the lighthouse, Henrik awakens, having lost his temporary connection to the interface. Mischief reveals that he knows what Henrik is trying to decide, still being connected to him. Mischief asks Henrik if building this being is truly what nature intended, or if it was Mr. Greeting's misunderstanding, having been sent into overwhelmed hysteria upon seeing what was likely never meant to have been seen. He sums up the question. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Hendrik ponders this statement, as the awakened interface senses the spiritual energy of the lighthouse. He chooses to exist in the real world and finish what he started before moving on. With the decision made, Mr. quickly fuses with Hendrik and flees the scene before they can be absorbed by the living interface. A hand of Cammy tries to stop them, but Mischief dodges it. The interface guzzles energy from the lighthouse like a baby with a bottle, but it is not satisfied with the minuscule amount of energy within. The hand forms again, forcing Mischief and Henrik to descend the rock formation for cover. Mischief tells Henrik that he made the right decision in choosing what is real over what is an illusion, for an illusion isn't a choice at all. As if on cue, the visage of his wife and great-granddaughter appear before him, but something is not right. Henrik then notices she is holding a knife to his great-granddaughter's throat. Mischief expels himself from Henrik's body and becomes an apple. The form of his wife coaxes Henrik to join the interface, along with his great-granddaughter, now that she is found, so they can all finally be together within the interface. Henrik holds up the apple, symbolizing his choice of real life over the illusion of life within the interface. In one swift throw, Henrik launches Mischief at the illusion. Mischief morphs into a hand and grabs the thing's face, pulling off the mask to reveal the being to be Cammy. Mischief takes a look through Cammy's eyes and sees nothing differently. Cammy attacks Mischief, and he uses this moment to comedically explain the difference between them. The difference is that he stayed an individual on the inside. Cammy was never an individual to begin with. Though they are the same on the inside, they are two very different beings. Mischief then reaches into Cammy's exposed energy and begins absorbing it. Cammy unleashes multiple attacks, including self-destructing, in an attempt to destroy Mischief. Mischief is damaged, but is able to absorb enough energy to eat Henrik's hat and reform. He then forms into an apple again, this time a very large apple, in an attempt to lure the interface monster in. It almost immediately notices and charges at the fruit. Mischief delivers his last legendary line as he reminds Henrik that the strong eat the weak, and the strong do eat, even parasites as he is scooped up and devoured by the interface. Filled with mischief's cerebral energy, the interface is at last satisfied. 
but it is devoured in return by mischief. In our final glimpse into this world, we open on a snowy afternoon where life has returned to some form of normalcy. And we see a diner in the city, two of the patrons seated there being Henrik and his great-granddaughter. This scene was inspired by the painting Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. After the credits, we get one final mysterious scene. We see the lifeless body of the interface, but within its nostrils lies cerebral energy. Could Mischief have survived the ordeal? Are the two locked in an endless power struggle? Perhaps the world within the interface persists, though the beings themselves have both passed. Only time will tell, I suppose. But that is a story for another day. Thank you all so much for watching my chronological timeline of Umami's interface. If you all liked what you saw here, please, please, please check out Umami's channel. Not only does he have interface on there, but he has all kinds of awesome shows, awesome pieces of art, and just a lot there to enjoy. So please, if you like what you saw here, check out his channel. I really love this show, and I know a lot of people had a little bit of trouble kind of following along, so I hope this helped you all out. I did a lot of research, I really looked into every little piece, I uh, tried to get into Umami's head like we did in the interview, and I just I really feel like we're really, at least really close, if not exactly, where we need to be on the chronological timeline. So I hope this helped you all enjoy Interface just a little bit more. And I do have a couple more things I want to do with Interface before I stop talking about it, but this was the big one. This is the chronological timeline. So thank you all so much for spending time with us today and really going through it and enjoying Interface with us. I, I just I really enjoy Interface and I'm glad that others do too. So thank you all so much for coming by today. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching Umami, I hope you enjoyed it as well. I really love your series. I really love all that you do and I just I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much for making Interface. It means so much to me. And it really brought that classical art back into the forefront, in my opinion. And I just, I really appreciate someone doing that. So, thank you so much. All right, I'll see you all soon. Got plenty of videos on the way. So, keep your eyes wide open and never stop reading. See you all. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our patrons. Thank you all for everything you do to support what I do. Investigator Zeus. Dobby's Music. Vexus. Jerry Mullins. Phantasm 7 and CNK114. Thank you all again for keeping this channel and my other projects going.